Hey everybody. So we're going to talk about the illusion of abuse that uh, narcissists and borderlines are able to create and sell to a high degree of efficiency and believability. Uh, if you've been in a relationship with a borderline or a narcissist, chances are good you've heard the accusation of how abusive you are or they've told somebody else how abusive you are or they've told the police how abusive you are and people largely tend to believe them over you and that's a really weird position to be in considering the fact that in most cases it's their partners the the partner of the narcissist or borderline is the one who's actually on the receiving end right so how does this illusion actually work it's I've done a lot of reading a lot of research uh, and there's a lot of just anecdotal evidence that floats around that says it's because they're evil, they're pathological, they're sociopaths, and they're psychopaths, and uh, you know they're just incredibly ma manipulative, and they know what they're doing, and, and all this stuff. And that is largely observable and largely true, but what causes it, like I, I with me, I like to go like one level below the levels <clears throat> and and there are some underlying mechanics that cause this that give them an edge and advantage and it's not probably not what you think so to understand this you have to understand what lies beneath the narcissistic personality disorder in most cases it's borderline personality disorder so there's a borderline core that uh, sits underneath narcissism and I'm not going to go into borderline disorder because it's largely out of scope here but what I want to mention is that borderlines have at their core a, a very very permeating sense of self inadequacy I'm not good enough they they grew up being verbally chastised you know verbally convinced that they're not worthy of love um, there's more than one cause of it okay there's some genetic factors um, environmental factors those types of things we're all products of our environment right so take that with you as well uh, but at the heart of it with borderline personality disorder when they're confronted with that sense of self inadequacy and I'll give the example of, of maybe a kid who is overweight, got teased a lot and bullied a lot because of his weight, grew into an adult, got slim, got healthy, got fit. Uh, the borderline side of that would be if he let himself go a little bit and got a quote dad bod, you know, and, and got the dad belly and somebody commented about it, he would go all the way back to that unpleasant point of time in his life where he was that fat kid being bullied and it would probably hurt him a hell of a lot more than the typical person to hear something like oh I see you got a dad belly right to somebody who grew up skinny all their life like me I was a twig my entire life still am uh, you know I've got a I've got a dad belly I look like Sid the sloth from uh, Ice Age right so I don't mind that it's funny to me. I look like I'm smuggling a basketball sometimes, right? But, you know, it doesn't really bother me all that much. I've got three kids, a career. I don't really care. Who am I trying to impress? You know, nobody. But for, for people who have such a negative, visceral experience with things like weight, um, it would cut a lot deeper and cause a... a a far worse emotional wound we'll call it all right so where narcissistic personality disorder comes in on top of that is it's a very fragile coping mechanism so with the borderline if he just grows up and, and becomes healthy uh, and, and normal looking that's fine but he doesn't really have any sort of built-in defensive mechanism against having to um, reconfront that that pain right so the narcissistic equivalent of that would be if he had got fit got healthy and then was like you know what 
I can prevent myself from ever having to feel this bad again if I just work out and become a bodybuilder and I become the, the, the strongest, ripped, most ripped, sexiest man alive, uh, you know, then I'll never be fat again and, and, and nobody could ever say anything bad about me again. And that's my protection, right? That's, so that's a lot of, of what lies uh, in narcissistic personality disorder. That's when you see the narcissistic rage. When that defense structure, and it's very fragile, this defense, right? It's very, still very fragile. Because even, even if he were the strongest, sexiest, most ripped, buff man in the world, even if somebody called him fat, he would still go to that borderline place, right? And you, you might call, you know, be like, oh, hey, I see you're getting a dad by being sarcastic because he's obviously very ripped. But if that makes it through that narcissistic uh, defense, well, then he still feels that, that borderline self-inadequacy. And when that happens, they go into a complete psychological collapse. And it's very, very painful, right? So when you are in a relationship with somebody who is borderline and somebody who is narcissistic, which has borderline rolled into it as part of a package deal, right? It's sort of like a value meal, right? A, a, a value meal, a terrible. Uh, and it's terrible to deal with too. I've learned a lot about borderline disorder and it, it's really no joke uh, to be someone who has it. Um, it can be very painful. When, you, when they experience this pain, they experience a psychological collapse, it's very painful for them. And that's at the core of the, where the abuse dialogue comes in. Because normal people, and I use this term normal, meaning you don't have a disorder, but people who are not disordered with a cluster B disorder, almost never use the word abuse. We don't ever use it to describe our relationships or other people or anything like that. And we don't do that for two reasons. Number one, we are fully aware of what that implies the implications and potential fallout from an abuse narrative. So we use things like, oh, they're very mean, they're very unpleasant, they were emotionally unstable, um, they were crazy. Uh, we, use, we use terms like that. Uh, borderlines and narcissists largely use the terms abuse and they largely use the term controlling, right? Now, why do they use those two terms? Well, one of the things that makes them unafraid and, and so forward with using the term abuse, abuse is because of the victim mindset and the victim mentality that gets baked in to the disorder. See, because this is one of those things where when they feel that self-inadequacy, that comes from that's rooted in abuse right that that the whole genesis of that self inadequacy comes from abusive behavior by adults and authority figures in childhood and early adulthood and so that's how they have that association so they have no qualms using the term abuse because now it's just what it is is they've felt this before as, as a child. They've determined that it was abuse when they were a child. Now they're an adult. You're obviously doing this, making them feel the same way as an adult did in their previous life. Therefore, you must be abusive too. So they really don't have any barriers to using the term. And it's an emotional sell because they feel, this, they feel abused. And to them, that's their truth. And so, it's even, this is, is becoming more and more well known uh, in Dr. Childress's book, Foundations. He even mentions this, that uh, narcissists and borderlines use, overuse the term abuse so much that now they're having to change their protocols in domestic situations and in uh, uh, mental health, professional uh, environments where when somebody's using the term abuse, they also have to check and consider whether or not the supposed victim 
is actually the abuser and has borderline personality disorder. Like, no joke. Like, if, if you go to a, a counselor or a therapist, the newer protocols are saying that if one of them is openly alleging abuse, there's a 50-50 chance that the victim actually has borderline personality disorder. Wow. You know, thank God that information is getting out there slowly but surely. But So that's how they're able to sell it. Because they do actually believe it because they're feeling the same feelings that have hung around since childhood. And that's not your fault. That doesn't make you abusive. That means that they haven't integrated it and gotten over it. And so borderlines, like I said, they don't have any way of, of guarding and protecting against feeling that self inadequacy narcissists kind of do but it's still very fragile and that's how you end up that's what's quote behind the mask when they pull the mask off what's actually occurring is they've now felt that core self inadequacy and the mask coming off is actually a psychological collapse and it is a full psychological collapse to the point where when they're feeling hurt and when the world has crumbled around them, the priority is to rebuild a solidified world around them. They're rebuilding and that is the priority. And they will reassemble their feelings and their and facts and reality and truth. They will restructure all of that to be able to come back from it uh, and and come up with a whole new understanding of the world past present and future that now stops the pain uh, and you can see this this is why when you have uh, indisputable facts that, of their bad behavior they pivot they pivot they dodge they parry they parry they thrust they thrust like they're nimbly bimbly little shits and it's like the in the matrix you know when they're dodging bullets and the agents are moving like super fast and blurry that's that's the the best special effect i got to recreate it so this is my impression of the matrix dodging bullets that's what i got but that's that's what they do mentally and in the on the more narcissistic side of the spectrum they even sort of take pride and their ability to do this and it's kind of sort of like why is this anything to brag about I don't know you know it's but you know it's, it's what they got that's their superpower they can they can dodge culpability uh, like like an agent so you know <clears throat> that's what they got that's their talent so I guess they got to be proud of it anyways right so uh, anyways, that that's that's really sort of what the the what where what, how when why of the, this abuse narrative, uh, and to them it is very real, and you have to understand a big part of what aids the pathological lying, um, the smear campaigns, etc is the fact that to them it is very real and they do really believe it granted there are some that don't i'm not saying this is not a, a, a one size fits all thing you know everybody's different but largely we've all met somebody who lies so much they believe themselves uh, and somebody who's just seems to have a superpower at lying and spinning the truth uh, that's why so, it's them, it's their reality, and uh, I'll leave you with this. The way that they perceive it, when this happens, when, 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 they're, when they've changed and warped reality, they will often say something like, well, that was until I realized, you know, you know or they had me fooled, but I finally realized it. So that's one of the indicators that this has happened when they say well back then it was a but I've come to realize that B right 
Now that's the narrative everybody uses, right? So normal people say that too, right? Case in point about whatever narcissist or borderline was in your life and you're like, I came to realize that they were crazy and, and, and they were abusing me and I uh, got out, right? So these are the terms that everybody uses. You have to consider who it is saying these things, but you'll hear things like that where they say, I've come to realize blank, or they'll say, well, or they, they consider it an epiphany or they consider it a change of opinion. They'll say, well, you know, I changed my mind. You know, I have the right to change my mind. So they, 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 they look for statements like that. You say whenever they say things like, or they'll, they'll put it back on you. They say, well, that's just your opinion, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's just my opinion. What's your point? My opinion doesn't just suddenly change every time somebody says something hurtful to me. So that's uh, that's what I got. Please like, comment, or share. Join the Facebook group. Um, I've got, I think, 10 people right now. So I'm just going to start dropping the fact that there is a Facebook group called Narcissistectomy. Uh, I'm going to try and drop a link in the description. doesn't always happen that way, but um, I'm very forgetful. So uh, if, if there's not a link to the Facebook group, comment, say, hey, put a link to the Facebook group. And I'll put a link to the Facebook group because I deliver. You just got to remind me. Anyways, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next video.